Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Walt Wines Happy Hour. It's so good to be coming to you here from Napa Valley. My name is Jeff Sapelli. I'm the general manager for Walt Wines, and I have an incredible guest, Patricia Richardson uh, from Home Improvement, Strong Medicine, and a number of other shows that you're familiar with will be joining me in just a minute. Uh, before we get going, this is the holidays. This is a perfect time for you to be shopping online. Um, everyone right now has the opportunity to have these wines set and delivered to you before the Christmas holiday. So be sure to go online at waltwines.com, hallwines.com, or bacawines.com to pick your favorites out and have them shipped to not only you, because that's what I'm going to do, but also to a bunch of your friends so that you can gift them uh, our wines for the holidays. You enjoy dollar shipping when you shop online. Uh, but I know the real reason that you're all here. I know that uh, you probably, like me as a Gen Xer, grew up with Jill Taylor as your mom, television mom, throughout the 90s. And we have the great pleasure of welcoming <clears throat> Patricia Richardson. She was the star, Jill Taylor, of Home Improvement uh, throughout the 90s. She hosted the Emmys with Ellen. She was the main character, one of the main characters on a Lifetime show called Strong Medicine. She was uh, West Wing, and she's been at, in a number of uh, Hallmark movies, especially right now around the, the Christmas. So I'm hoping that, Patricia, you're out there. Yeah, I am. Hello. Hi. It's nice to meet you. And I, I heard, is it okay to call you Pat? Yes, you can. In fact, I would prefer you call me Pat because when people call me Patricia, I think my mom's mad at me, and she's coming in my room to yell at me. I totally understand. Uh, well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, where are you? Where are you at? Um, I'm in Los Angeles at the moment. Um, I have a home in Connecticut as well, but now I'm on the West Coast. I have a daughter who lives here. My two sons are back on the East Coast. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, I'm glad to be reaching you at four o'clock your time. That's perfect time for us for happy hour. And that's I have a. Yes. Yes. Well, at the winery, it's always a happy hour, but um, ah. I have a great bottle of of rosé for you to try if you'd like. And we have this incredible technology we've discovered through the internet where I can pass it to you in Los Angeles. Oh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just try to pass you a glass of wine. Oh, thank you. It, it, this kind, right? Here That's the one, it, it's amazing. Walt, all right, here, let me pour this in just a second. Sure, thank you. All right, this is my favorite wine. In You're fact, a rosé fan? I wanted to ask you, is this um, a real fashionable wine right now? Because so many of my friends seem to like it. So I didn't know, if, is this kind of in or something? Well, uh, well cheers to you first. And then, oh, of course, um, I would I would say, so the wine is owned by uh, Craig and Catherine Hall. Rosé is one of Catherine's favorite wines that we make. And so we actually make two. We make one for the Waltz, uh, so the, what you're having in your glass today from Pinot Noir. And we also make a, a Zinfandel from our Baca uh, line of wines. So it's a white Zinfandel, uh, play on white Zinfandel, rosé of Zinfandel. Oh, but yes, Zinfandel. a rosé of Zinfandel. I didn't even know there was such a thing as white Zinfandel. Yes, okay. there is. There it's, it is. Uh, it's very lovely, has a lot of flavor, but cheers to you. Um, nice, light, easy drinking. I think that's probably what makes it so sexy. That's what I like about uh, the, the crispness, the acidity, the freshness. This is delicious. Now, tell me about what would be the difference between this and a white Zinfandel? Um, well, not a lot. So color is always derived from the skin of the berry. And so Pinot Noir tends to have a lighter skin, a little bit of a thinner skin. But in both wines, you're going to uh, contract that, that, that color from how much you actually, um, from how, much, how long you actually leave the juice on the skins, because the juice is actually clear. So that's how you get this nice blush pink rosé color is just by giving it a little touch of the skin contact while you're, um, you know, sending it through fermentation. And then when we drain it, we drain it before it actually leaches too much of that color into the wine. Uh, well, <laughs> sorry, I lost, I lost a little bit of your dialogue there. I don't know if everyone did, um, but I, I kind of got the gist of what you were saying. This I may have walked myself into deep wine land, so I apologize for that. Oh, oh, well, I, I sure wish I was where you are and I had that background instead of this one. Although, well, I think, I think you're 
You've had some pretty cool backgrounds in your career, though. You've had all kinds. You've, you've had lots of different um, roles and different shows, and I wanted to talk to you about that, if that's okay. We're actually looking right now at the the Sacrache Vineyard, which is in uh, uh, just next to our winery in Rutherford, California. So that's where where we are. Which winery? Which winery would that be? Because I, I I'm seeing bottles that are from all these different places. There's there's um, Bob's Ranch, and then there's. Mm -hmm. There's um, Sonoma. There's some in Sonoma. Mm -hmm. and there's some in uh, the, uh, there's all these different places that you're coming from. Exactly. So we make we make grapes for the Walt portfolio or we make wines from the Walt portfolio from grapes that come from all over California and Oregon, actually, oh. for our Hall portfolio, which is uh, based in Napa Valley. The, they come from vineyards like this from our Sacrache vineyard. This makes our wine. It's called Catherine Hall uh, Excellence and um a really nice one. Are you saying sacrache? Is that how you're sacrache? Yeah. It, it's it's uh it's it's actually named after the three um, fraternity brothers from the from uh, University of California that um, planted it. And then the oh. halls have actually done a lot of replanting and, and improvements since then, but we kept the name. Well, they got to do what my father's dream was. So late in his life, he used to always say that if he, he was a, actually had a pretty interesting life. He was a naval test pilot along with that whole first group of seven astronauts. He went through Patuxent with Scott Carpenter and Alan Shepard and all that first group and ranged John Glenn's first uh, flight that went all the way around the world. And wow. And knew all of those people. And he did that for 10 years and then eventually went into the um, uh, defense industry and built planes and did all that stuff. But um, late in life, you know, he did all these interviews. He taught himself, you know, how to play piano and blah, blah, blah. But what he really wished he'd done, if he could have done anything else, is what you're doing. And, oh. and he, it was his dream. He used to say, if only I could have had a vineyard and done that. And so he was very frustrated with his four daughters because he couldn't really get <laughs> in and wine and he would push wine on us every night at dinner and he, I can still remember him going a chateau bottle is shaped like this and mm -hmm. just try this and I was very I was very I wasn't interested in wine and you know yeah. I, I would taste it at dinner and go <laughs> <laughs> well I'm glad we found one that you like that's I, that's really nice wine and actually I grew to love other ones I grew to love Cabernet Sauvignon I learned mm -hmm. that that's so wonderful with Mexican food and mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's certain, you know, I just learned to like it with food. So I mostly I think, drink with food. What we always like to say is we just like that you like wine and you should pick the wines that you really like. And I think that's what really is awesome and fun about wine is there are so many different types and you love them for so many different reasons. So, um, well, cheers to you. Older and are very sophisticated about it. And your dad. Books. And they teach, they're, they're like, no, mom, they order it for dinner for me. They'll say, no, 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 you want this, you want this. And, and they'll say, this is good with this. My kids are incredibly sophisticated about it. And they teach uh -huh. me. They taught me more than dad did because I wasn't interested then. That's cool. Well, hey, I have a couple questions for you. And we like to play a game called Sip or Spill. Uh -oh. So the way this game works is I will ask you a couple questions, not too many. And if you would like to answer the question, you go ahead and spill. But if you would like to prefer to, to, to keep that closer to the vest, go ahead and take a sip. Okay. Okay. So these are, we'll, we'll start with an easy one. Who gave you your best Christmas gift? You know, I hate to say it. <laughs> I hate to give him credit, but my ex-husband oh. gave, gave me the most thoughtful because it really did take thought. And that was uh, when my youngest son was born in Santa Fe, my ex-husband was doing the movie Silverado. And mm -hmm. we saw this piece of art that was so perfect because my, my first son was born a Pisces in the desert. I mean, sort of in okay. the middle of nowhere in New Mexico, in Santa Fe. And we had gone by this piece of art where this man, this man had painted a fish swimming in the desert, which we thought was so perfect. You know, Henry's being born a Pisces in the middle of the desert. And we didn't have the money to buy it. At the time, mm -hmm. we were you know, struggling actors. And, and I was like, oh, it's really too bad we couldn't buy it. Years later, you know, we're in LA and both of us were working quite a bit more. One Christmas, that painting showed up. Oh and my it was gosh. Years later. And, and the thing that was so amazing about the present was that he had to go back, find the gallery in Santa Fe that had had the picture originally, find the name of the paint. We had another painting of his that was cheaper. So he knew the name of the artist. So he was mm -hmm. able to call as artist. The artist couldn't even remember ever having painted that particular painting. Oh. 
asked about the painting, the artist was like, huh? I don't remember the painting. <laughs> he painted another one. Ray, Whoa. Ray described the painting to him. He painted it and Ray bought it and, and I have it on the wall in the other room. Oh, that's great. I mean, so, what a great story. You basically, you had a, a, a piece of art commissioned for you. To commission it. So yeah. I mean, was such a thoughtful present. Yeah. Never forgotten. That was amazing. Well, that's cool. that's a very that's a fun story. All right, so the next question is a little harder. What's the uh, worst Christmas gift you've ever gotten? The worst one. Okay, my sister gets this one. Okay. I have three sisters, and we traveled all the time. We had to move every two years. I never went to one school longer than two years of my life. So the only people we ever knew were each other most of the time, and we fought all the time. And uh -huh. my I used to fight physically. I mean, we hit each other with trash cans. We scratched each other. We, we <laughs> each other up. We were horrible to each other. So I'll prep with that. I was just as bad to her as she was to me. And she was four years younger, but she was smart. And I couldn't decimate her with words the way I could my older sisters. So it got ugly. She uh -huh. Box. She's all excited about giving me this Christmas present. My other sister seemed to be very excited about this present she's giving me. So I think, oh, wow, this must be really great because everybody's excited about this present. And it was sticks and stones. <laughs> Not only a great uh, answer, but a great story, by the way. You really <laughs> brought that right in. Thank you. So this one's a little bit more close to home. <laughs> um, maybe we'll see if he's listening. Um, so Tim Allen, I want to know, is he the same bumbling kind of guy that he plays on home improvement, last man standing and frankly, Buzz Lightyear on toy story? No, not a bit, not a bit. He's a really smart businessman, as you might guess. I mean, look how much money he is a mess. He, he is, he's really caring. I mean, you could tell probably by the way, both casts of both shows loved him so much. Um, yeah. I mean, the last man standing cast is very dedicated to him and very, very loyal. Um, you know, and the fact that I, I think it's also really amazing that he can have the politics that he does and be work with people who have completely opposite politics and they all still love him anyway. And I still love him. Yeah. I, my politics could not be more opposite. More. And, and yet, you know, he has a wonderful sense of humor. He's uh, very caring of people and he's, and he's a smart guy. I mean, he's, you know, he, <laughs> we won't go into the politics thing. Um, <laughs> so, Probably a good idea. So I'll, 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 I'll put some qualification on the smart, but <laughs> just like. Well, I heard he's also fairly crafty. And speaking of gifts, he gave you something really nice and you took a picture of it. Um, well, he gave you that watch, but he, he created. Um, okay. Oh yeah, this was. Set. Not a Christmas gift, if you had asked about Christmas, or I would have said this, because this yeah. is the greatest gift I ever got. So I, I'm going to, I'm taking the Well, we have a picture of it, actually, uh, Pat. You want to do the picture, or you want me to show you the real thing? Uh, well, if you want to show us the real thing, I that'd be great. I put you on Zoom. The reason I put I, you on Zoom was so I could walk you over and show it to you. Okay. Okay. So wait, hold on. This is it. So and people probably enjoy looking at the real thing. Now, well, I do. Sure. I actually seeing it this is first i'll walk away so that you see the whole thing can you see yeah. that uh-huh it is a replica no. of my kitchen and garage down to the every single prop now i'm trying yeah. to make sure that i say every single prop that was on that set now we'll begin with the garage wait i'm trying to get uh -huh. the right Oh, I got the go garage was where he, he, where your character always hated him coming up with new yeah, creations. But look at the detail in this kitchen. I'm yeah. trying to make sure. I, that you I'm got the blender there. there. Yeah. Can you see the stuff on the fridge? Yeah. So yeah. I, I was actually watching a couple episodes of Home Improvement before just to kind of refresh my memory. That's a very contemporary kitchen you guys had. It's it's very open and it got, went right into the living room. I There's don't know the, if you can see this. Is, are you seeing this very well? Now, yeah, you can great. See more than I'm showing you here because it's really hard for me to tilt this the right way. But no, that's the that's where you were. You would um, then there was a counter across from where the range was. Down here on the bottom is prop queen. Love you. Too. Yes. So involved in props all the time. And, you know, I don't know if you remember the episode where Tim, Tim walked into the refrigerator. Uh-huh. 
And then we had everybody walking in. We spent so much time in that kitchen and I spent so much time writing stuff. Um, yeah. I ended up writing a lot of stuff. And, 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 you know, I would say like, I was always insisting that they have Tim and the kids help me clean, help me do work because I thought it was so unrealistic. If I didn't have a house cleaner and I was yeah. working and having all this, I didn't want American women to feel bad about, you know, not being perfect because mm -hmm. you have all these shows where women are, um, they have kids, they may be working. Oh, well, okay. Perfect example, Bill Cosby. Here was Felicia Rashad and so gorgeous and a lawyer and, yeah. a sister, and they have 1800 children and they have a perfect house and she's always sexy and they have a perfect marriage and everything's perfect. And who's cleaning that house and who's taking care of those kids and how right. is she so perfect? You know, yeah. I don't know about any other women, but it makes me feel inadequate. So, um, you know, I'm trying to work and I'm trying to hold up all these balls in the air and failing at all of them. And, and then you see people on TV. And I think that people watch TV to see what is normal. And that's mm -hmm. why I think our whole society has deteriorated. Because once reality television hit, people looked at that and thought that was normal. And yeah. it's not. Because reality television, they go try to find the worst humans on the planet, so they'll fight a lot and be interesting. And now people are watching these worst humans on the planet and going, oh, they do that too. Okay, so I guess it's okay for me to be like that. And now that's why we have Trump as president. Never mind. We're going to go ahead and skip past that because I hear there's a new candidate that might be coming in soon. Um, but going back to your role as as a, a that's all right. You, that, I will cheers you that. Um, anyway, so I, go ahead. people could go, this is a normal family and this is OK and this is not OK. And this is why this is how people act. Well, and you played uh, you, you you played, I think, a single mom on Strong Medicine. Well, um, so was married. I got separated. My boyfriend got killed, which was actually happened in life. And then, uh, yeah, so then I was yeah. single. Yes. So what were some of your, so you, you had all these incredible roles. Um, you were on the West Wing, you were on Strong Medicine. I loved you on the West Wing. And I'm sure that was a, a, a total character play for you. You were a Republican strategist for the- um, I know, the, but we were good Republicans. Yes. But so what was your favorite role? What was most challenging about it? What was most fun? I have to tell you, people would be very surprised to hear this, but I think my favorite role was strong medicine. Okay. I, I, no one would believe it, but I got to, to play a woman who was, you know, I was serving a, a, a really important role, I think. You know, Whoopi Goldberg created that mm -hmm. show. Yeah. To teach young women about their bodies and and we had a lot i had so many young girls right in who didn't know anything and and i was like the um super doc who spoke yeah. whatever language needed to be spoke spoken that week i spoke to gala one week yeah you know so i was this west point doctor and but i had to lecture everybody on everything so yeah. it was great it was you know we were teaching women about their heart heart disease and about uh, organ donation and about mm -hmm. really how to take care of their health and um uh, you know and it was just in, in ways that you storytelling in ways that they would watch and and we're talking a lot about ethics and we're talking about a lot of stuff that you know sex and safe sex yeah and a lot about safe sex and I just felt like it, and, and I loved the fact that unlike with a sitcom, you just, I never wanted to be famous. I never really cared about what, that. And, yeah. and I loved about doing a drama and particularly this drama, because it was so under the radar. It was online. Uh -huh. and we didn't have to do much press. There was no pressure. And mm -hmm. it was my dream job because I could just go there, work, uh -huh. not have a bunch of people in suits, changing the lines, changing the lines, going there. Right. Yeah. Oh my God, there's not enough laughs. None of that. You just go, you work, you do your work, you go home. You learn yeah. your line, go back the next day, you do your work. There's none of that other stuff, that professional celebrity stuff. Right. All of that, none of that. You just work. That's and great. I really liked that. I, and I love the people I worked with. And it was really maybe my favorite job because there wasn't all that other stuff attached, that other yeah. famous. Mm, doing the celebrity thing, you didn't, ugh, you didn't have to do that. And West Wing was terrible. Oh, really? Because it's the opposite. It's like everybody had a say in what you said, right? Every single person is the smartest person in the room. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, I would love to pass you another glass of wine, if that's okay. Oh. I'm try a little. Um, so funny enough, I'm going to create an analogy to your father's story. So this is uh, our Bob's Ranch Pinot Noir. So I'll move it a little closer to the screen for people. So this is a wine that's actually named for Catherine's father. She's the owner of the winery. And her, this is how she got into wine. He was a passionate grower in California. And, um, you know, before Catherine started making wine, uh, we, uh, um, he passed away. And so when we wanted to make a really exceptional wine named under the Walt label, which is her maiden name, we chose this vineyard in Sonoma, in the Sonoma Coast and made it our flagship wine. So this is our 2018 was, vintage. What was her last name? What was her last name? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was her father's first name. Oh, okay. No, so so Bob Waltz is is uh, is the literally Bob's Ranch Walt Wines. Oh. So we're gonna I'm gonna play the internet game again. I'm gonna try to oops, it goes this way. There. Da -da. there it is. There, I got it. it. Goes. Turning everything the wrong way. Okay, there we go. No, you're great. That's the one. I'm going to pour this in my big glass. Yes, a big glass. It needs to be like like half the size of your head, evidently, like mine is. Tell me if I don't know anything about Pinot Noir. Tell, can you tell me about Pinot Noir? Yeah, I'd love to. So this is a wine uh, from the Sonoma Coast. From a, you know, Basically, if you're in Napa, it's due west of where we are today. It's much cooler climate. It's windier. And Pinot Noir needs that type of climate to grow because it has such a thin skin, it can't take a lot of heat. So it's looking for those really short days, those really cool sunrise days so that it can gracefully mature and start to ripen. And then you actually pick it a little earlier than you do Cabernet Sauvignon and preserve that, that flavor, that essence. It usually has a little bit more of the terroir quality to the wine. But I think what Bob's does really well is it's a big, explosive, powerful style of Pinot Noir that has an amazing amount of freshness and acidity. And so I'll ask you what you think of the wine. Okay. Oh, it smells good. Aromatics are, are uh, we, we aim for some big aromatics. It tastes really good. Now, thank you. Here this because the red wine I ever drink is Cabernet because that's mostly what I drink if I drink a red wine. Mm -hmm. It seems like in comparison Cabernet, it's not quite as sharp. I'm just so stupid about wine. No, so no, you're good. You're doing it. You're, you're doing it. Quite as um, sharp as Cabernet or mm -hmm. much as a bite as Cabernet is. You got um, it. Is that right? That's right. So we would say is that the sharpness you're talking about is the tannin. It's the grip. It's the power and the structure of the wine. And all of that comes from the skins. So skins are the are, are where you get that that you know drying sensation kind of in the corners of your palate, and then Pinot Noir tends to be a little softer. It doesn't have as much of that that structural quality, but the fruit is really beautiful, and usually have a little bit more acidity in the wine. The, the, so I could sip this without like I like with Cabernet. I always feel like I need to eat something if I'm going to drink that. But yeah. like, I feel like I could maybe just sip this and not have to have food. Well, I will sip along with you, Pat. If that's all right. <laughs> Thank you. So I've been dying. The question I wanted to ask you is yeah. my own personal question. I've been dying to ask you about the Emmys. You got to host the Emmys in the 90s. The worst, I remember watching it. Worst, um, worst, hardest, hardest thing I've ever done. I'm just not that person. How do you wrangle the Emmys? It's a scripted show where people love to go off script all the time. God, I'm dying to tell you the Ellen story, but... It won't. It won't go well. It won't be a good idea. Okay, I just. <laughs> That's okay. I think. If people see this, and, and and where does this go? This thing I'm doing right now. Just on our Facebook page. Oh. Hmm. I think we could probably talk about. So, you're the host. Your okay. job is to guide the show. Okay, I'll just. And tell there you. are lots of people that I, are giving away awards. Is it easy to keep them under wraps? No, no, no. I didn't want to do this at all. I am not. I, I hate any job that has that has professional celebrity attached to it. I, I, I'm shy. I I don't like to get up in front of people. Um, I didn't want to run for president of the union, which I did at one point, mainly because I didn't want to have to get up at the SAG Awards and speak to people. Uh, I'm yeah. so intimidated. I, you know, when I was uh, doing home improvement, I didn't do any of the. Um, award shows. I didn't go out and do like opening every movie or uh, uh -huh. I didn't like ball. I didn't, I didn't do all of that stuff that other celebrities do where they meet other celebrities because yeah. 
I, my babies, my twins were three months old when I started. And, and, and I had a five-year-old I was never seeing who had just started kindergarten. So anytime I had extra time, I was home with them. Every, yeah. you know, so I just turned all that stuff down and I never met other famous people. So I didn't like to do all that kind of stuff. So uh, when they, I kept turning down, they kept offering me when Home Improvement became so hot, they kept offering me, uh, you know, emceeing American Comedy Awards or things like right. that. And I kept telling my agents, no, 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 I can't do that. I'm not a comic. I don't want to get up in front of people. No, no, no. And so my agents were like, well, okay, you can say no, but if they ever ask you to host that, I mean, you have to do that. And I was like, right, right, yeah, right, no, like that all rapid. And then they asked me, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know, what did they ever ask? So then my agents are, you have to do this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. no. No, and there's like you have to get away from Tim. You know, you're supporting person Tim. You need to get on your own and go do something where you're not supporting somebody. So, yeah. this was not. I, I'm like, look, I'm not Dame Judith Anderson. I'm not a stand up. This is not me. I can't do this. I'll have a nervous breakdown. So, cut to, you know, six weeks before, and now I'm having to do it. So they called me and they asked me, you know, what I wanted to do. Do I? Do you want this story? It may be too long. This um. Is I was going to I was going to pivot on you. I was going to ask you what's going on in your life now and see what what, yeah. what projects you're you're working on. A little bit of Ellen Dish and you know people are kind of piling on on Ellen right now and she just got covid. So it's not a very oh, no. nice, it's not a nice Ellen story. It, 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 it was uh, you know it was just kind of weird for me because I was the one that was new in Hollywood and new at doing this kind of stuff and um it, it just I, I'm not going to tell this story. <laughs> Never mind. Someday I'll tell I, you. No, but I think I think what good. in the long run it all ended up good with Ellen and That's and nice. I was so happy because this is before her show. This is before her yeah. show air. It was before any of that. And and um I was just confused because I had never done anything like this. And um I got kind of she wanted me to wear all the clothes she had picked out. She uh -huh. wanted she picked out the tux she picked out she wanted me to she wanted me to compete with her she wanted me to come out without her to start yeah. the show so that she wasn't even there yet she was out greeting celebrities and right. the whole thing would be about her and i would come out and be like oh where's ellen where's ellen and i'd be wearing the dress she picked out and then she would come out wearing a dress and everybody would be flipping out that she was wearing a dress and i'm like i had no idea who she was i didn't know she never worn dresses and she was like well everybody will flip out because i'm wearing a dress and i'm like it's a big deal that you're wearing a dress I you know, so it was like I was supposed to wear her dress. I was supposed to wear her tux, and I had just given birth to twins, and I was huge. Yeah. I didn't have a waist. I couldn't yeah. wear it with a waist. So I'm like, I can't wear a dress with a waist. I can't wear clothes you picked out. I, I'm huge. You know, I, I'm nursing twins. I can't wear clothes you picked out. You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to compete with you. I don't want to have this whole thing set up where I come out wearing, and then you come out wearing, and I'm like. Hmm, and then go out and change into something else. And then I'm wearing, and then you come out wearing the same thing and I lift and come back out. I'm, I don't, that's setting up competition between women, which is a really icky thing to do. I don't want yeah. us two women hosting the show and immediately be competing with each other about what we're wearing. That is a bad message to send and I don't want to do that. So that was the kind of what the setup. And I had come up with this idea that we should be like, come out, you know, it's so stupid that you change clothes. My idea had been that we come out wearing normal stuff and that each time we came out, we would be wearing ever more ridiculous outfits to the point <laughs> where we would be like Carmen Miranda by the end of the show and be- Yeah, totally. Bananas and stuff. And, and that that's what we should do. But, um, but I, <laughs> that was my idea. I think, I think that's a fun idea. I'm gonna I, try to do that on one of our Facebook lives. I'm gonna like come off screen and then, and then come on and I'll be dressed in like, I don't know. No, a great outfit. Just every time he came out, it just got more and more ridiculous. Because I've always thought it was ridiculous that hosts change their clothes in the middle of the show anyway. So, uh, but but I think to be fair, was it he just said, oh, "No, we'll just not do either one of those shows, those ideas." And um, and he told me that the reason we couldn't do my idea is because if somebody came into the show halfway through, they wouldn't know what was going on. <laughs> They see us wearing bananas on our heads and not know what we were doing. And so, you know. But here's the the clicker. Uh -huh. years, years later. I just turn on the TV and there's Ellen hosting some other, some right. other, show. she was doing it. She was changing her clothes through the whole show. Right. She was changing her clothes and getting more and more ridiculous throughout the show. And I went, oh my gosh, she used my idea. <laughs> well, you were a writer for years. I had no, you know, you, I think you probably had some good ideas on home improvement and all the oh, other shows that you were writing oh, for. That was my idea. The yeah. history 
episode happened because I had a hysterectomy. I mean, it was like, whatever you do in your, I have four sisters. So she had five sisters, my sister, my, my, everybody in my family's military. So her family's military. Uh, but yeah. it was that, you know, it was, that's why I, you know, held out for some stuff later because I was writing the show because they're, I mean, Tim and I had to, there's no time in a sitcom. They always have to take your life, base things on your life, take whatever suggestions you can give because there's no time and they are desperate for whatever you, you know, so well, what, why don't we edit this way? And also Tim and I were the only people that were contributing to the writing because every yeah. week after the first read through, Tim and I both went in after the first read through and I was the only woman. Woman Never. writer, I, I saw that show, that interview you gave. Yeah, there was no woman that was, you know, any the producer. There was no woman. There, there were great women writers, but they wouldn't give them any power. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciated that because you were, I mean, I, I know that was just one of the many roles that you were great in, but you did a great job with that show. Um, and it's, and you've been very generous with your time today. So I, I just wanted, it's Christmas, it's the holidays. Wanted to give you any last thoughts or any new projects you might have. <laughs> Very much. And now you made me open this wonderful bottle and who's going to finish it? Who, I, I've already written my daughter and said, you all better get over here sooner than you thought because you've got a couple of bottles of wine to finish. Well, yeah. Pat, thank you so much. And I hope that you're, they come back because, you know, before the show, you had mentioned that they, they actually made a trip to see us at the winery. And, so I, and I know she's getting married. So congratulations to you. Well, I think she's getting married very near you, probably. I mean, we're now looking at places above Big Sur. We're, we're ah, kind of looking okay. Well, we would love to see you up here. And okay. I know right now it's uh, not a good time to be moving around. But when it's all is, is done, please come see us. We would love to, to host you for a tasting, you and your family. I've never been to Napa Valley. It's all here for you. Gorgeous. It looks beautiful. Thank you so much. This was so Thank fun. You. Thanks. Thank you, Pat. It was wonderful to meet you. That's I've got a bucket list item checked off. So cheers to you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know which one to do. Let's do them both. Oh, I don't know. Like that. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. I'm going to do this one. Have a nice weekend. Happy holidays. Thank you. So for those of you who are just tuning in, that was uh, Patricia Richardson, uh, just an incredible actor. That was a really fun interview. She, she gave us a lot of good things. Um, we are wishing you the best uh, this holiday season. We've got some amazing wines available for you online at vaultwines.com, hallwines.com, and bacawines.com. The two wines that we're drinking today, the Rosé, uh, which unfortunately just sold out, but we'll have more for you next year. And our 2018 Bob's Ranch Pinot Noir, which is available online. You can pick that up. Uh, we, we really look forward to keeping everybody safe and sound this holiday season. So please do uh, grab a couple bottles of wine online, share them with your friends in whatever distance way you can. Be safe, be healthy, and sip up. Cheers to you. Thank you.